How are we, my friends? You are very welcome along to the first of two videos tonight on the Late Night Agenda here at Anfield Agenda. I'm going to speak about Liverpool's transfer links and the two names that are very, very, very highly prioritised on Jurgen Klopp's wish list. I'm going to ask you, of course, for your opinion. Let me know in the comment section. Do drop a like on the video. And you know to hit that subscribe button. Do you know what? The subscribe thing, I often pitch like, mate, they want to subscribe. They're going to subscribe. They're going to subscribe. Stop asking them to do it. But it's just a habit. You know, and I do like habits. I do like routines. I do like the same intros. But I also do like talking about transfers. And that is where I'm going to kick off tonight. I'm going to save the juicy stuff for the second part of the video. But for now, let's talk about potential outgoings from the football club. Naby Keita has been linked with both a move back to the Bundesliga and a move to Spurs amongst a couple of other Premier League clubs. Now, I think it's the right decision to not renew Naby Keita's deal. Obviously, he has been... To say a disappointment is an understatement because... Personally, when, when Naby Keita came in, I had really, really high hopes. We, we'd spoken about the Steven Gerrard number eight that he was given. We'd spoken about his potential. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, be it form, be it injuries, be it the style of football in the league, it hasn't worked out for Naby Keita. And I would be very concerned if Liverpool, who need a rejig in midfield, who need to go out there and refresh it, thought that giving Naby Keita a new contract would be a good idea. So I'm glad that it's not happening. I would rather he went back to the Bundesliga or somewhere outside the Premier League. But ultimately, that is no longer in our control because his contract is up at the end of the season. And it looks like, as I said, he will be moving on. And right now, Liverpool cannot control that situation. From January onwards, Naby was able to sign a pre-contract agreement, if he so wished, with clubs outside the Premier League. So let's wait and see how that one pans out. Uh, other potential outcomes in the summer. It does, from what I'm reading, look like James Milner will move on in the summer. Uh, not don't take that as a given by the way that's just what I'm reading I've no insight to this with regards to any information from the club side and agent side or anything like that I'm just basing this off the stories that are doing the rounds so it looks like Jimmy Milner could move on again I do think that's the right decision we often speak about leaders in the dressing room and we have that in Henderson so if we're looking to refresh midfield and we want to have a senior pro in the squad. Well, I would rather that be Henderson and Milner, to be honest. So it looks like Jimmy will move on. And then, of course, we come on to Bobby Firmino. And uh, that two-year contract extension looks like it's getting closer and closer based off media reports, based off his age and stuff. And I think, again, I think that's the right decision. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, as we know, he will certainly be moving on in the summer. But now... I've, I've, I've enough of the foreplay. Let's get straight into the good stuff. And this was brought to my attention just before I went to record this video. So Liverpool's summer transfer objective is to bring in both Jude Bellingham and Matthias Nunch. While they also have asked about Moses Caicedo, and that's from Simon Jones of the Mail. Now, probably saying, "Hang on, Craig. This isn't really breaking news. This is stuff that we've all known for the longest time." This is the first time, or one of the first times, though. I've seen a journalist definitively come out and say who is top of Jurgen Klopp's wish list for midfield in the summer. We'd all had our own thoughts on it. Obviously, we knew Bellingham was the number one priority. And look, we'll move on to whether that's attainable or not in a moment or two. But the 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 fact that Simon has come out here and said that Matthias Nunch is, is also up at the top of that list, it gives you an idea as to what type of midfield Jurgen Klopp is looking to build. And personally... While other people may think there are some sexier names around right now, and Caicedo, one of those names, that of course has been mentioned with a move away from Brighton. Uh, he'd seen that Brighton had refused various offers from Chelsea and Arsenal in the last window, and I think he's overpriced. If I'm being honest with you, I really do think that 60, 70, 80 million quid for Moses Caicedo was just too much money. As, as good a player as he is, we're not a club that has the luxury of going out there and splashing that much cash on three or four midfielders. So Matthias Nunes had about 40 to 50 million and Jude Bellingham. I think that is a very, very good start if, and it is a big if, Liverpool can get those two over the line. Now, of course, the funds that Jurgen Klopp are going to have available to him are maybe contingent on FSG taking on a partner or selling some stake or all of the football club. And that's what the second video today is going to be about. So do keep an eye out for that one. But on this, look, 
I think the situation with Manchester City has probably played into our hands with regards to the Jude Bellingham situation. Now, I am not ruling out the possibility of United, potentially, if they're taken over by Qatari investors or another owner, whether it be uh, the guy uh, who's the you know, the United fan that owns uh, Eonus or whatever it's called. Uh, uh, England's richest dude. I keep forgetting the lad's name, probably because he's, he's got nothing to do with Liverpool, to be honest. But you know the lad I'm talking about. I'm sure you'll mention him in the comments section. Um, he He's been linked with the move for United and he's probably more palatable to the United fans than the potential Qatari owner. So let's see what happens there. Um, but with regards to Bellingham, I think the Manchester City situation and the fact that they've, I don't want to say shit to bed, but they've a lot of negative PR around them at the minute. And I wonder if, if that would be a detriment to them trying to sign Jude Bellingham. I hope and think it will be. But I wouldn't rule out if Manchester United are fresh with money that with the fact that they look like they're heading in the right direction under Ten Hag, if maybe they try and come in and scupper a potential deal. Now, we couldn't match Manchester United for finances. We simply couldn't. We couldn't offer the wages that they can because they generate more money than us. You can say to me, Craig, hang on, this year Liverpool have made more money than United because I'm sure you're already typing that. But I would say that the repayments that the Glazers have on Manchester United and those loan debt repayments and the fact that they've been out of Champions League football kind of on and off for a few years has been one of those factors as to why Liverpool have generated more money. I think when the Glazers sell up and they don't have those crippling loan repayments, then I think Manchester United become more profitable than Liverpool again unfortunately so i wouldn't really united out of it but then again i don't think it's the right project for him so but again lots of stuff starting to circulate around united maybe trying to push their name into the mix have they left it too late i hope so i'm still very 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 confident and of the mindset that jude bellingham will be a liverpool player in the summer the Mateus nunch part of it excites me because he's one of these midfielders that when you watch him, you can see what he brings to the game, but he's not a sexy name. He's not somebody that, like a Barella, as an example, or, or a Rice at this point in time, because he's a name that's also doing the rounds with regards to a big move. And of course, Rice would have the homegrown part to it. But I do like this move from Liverpool, particularly if he can be gotten around 40 to 50 million. And that means, in my opinion, if you get them two in, you need one more addition to them. And maybe you do roll the dice with a younger midfielder and maybe you go for somebody 19-20 to come in and, like I say, roll the dice. Bellingham's 19-20, but none of us think of Bellingham as a 19-year-old right now. We all think of him as somebody who was certainly the the prowess, the, the footballing ability, the footballing mind of a more senior pro. You've heard Jurgen Klopp mention that many times. So I'm very happy to see this and I don't think we'll sign Caicedo. Unless something drastic happens, I can't see Liverpool having the money to go out and buy Jude Bellingham, Mateus Nunch and Moses Caicedo in one window. So that is that. But the only other thing I wanted to ask you guys about is what players would you like to see Liverpool potentially sell? Because I read already, uh, ready, I read already, I read already, I read a very good article in uh, The Athletic that spoke about, you know, who should Liverpool keep and who should they sell in the summer? Um, I had a few that I would differ with, but one of the names that was mentioned in the article that kind of was like, wow, we're, we're here now, is the idea of selling Fabinho. That's the one that caught my eye. And I don't disagree with it. I do think this summer could be the right time to maybe try and make some money and Fabinho could be a player who's moved on. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. That is it for me with regards to transfers at the minute. Um, I wasn't even going to make a Bellingham video today. He wasn't in my thought processes today until Simon Jones' uh, piece from the mail popped up and I thought, well, you know, you don't need another excuse, Craig, to make a Bellingham video, but here is one for you, so... You know, I couldn't resist. Right, I'll be back in a while with the uh, ownership situation video. So please do keep an eye out for that one. Also, this week, of course, we're playing Everton uh, at Anfield on Monday. So we will be in a watch along from 7 o'clock. And there'll be a preview video coming up for that as well in the coming days. Much love, my friends. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.